Hello, everyone. This is Hit and Hustle from irissportsdaily.com. I am your host, Greg Flamong, as always. And um, as you know, we have we have a special show today. We have a former Notre Dame defensive back, cornerback, uh, two-year starter, Troy Pride, on the show. And he's going to be on in just one second. But before I bring him on, I just want to talk about um, irissportsdaily.com and our, and our YouTube channel. Uh, we're, we're putting out a lot more content um, starting, I guess, the last last week we uh, we've we've been adding a bunch of shows. Um, we're going to be putting out a lot more shows, live shows with me, um, with with guests, with Jamie, um, our 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 owner, site owner Mike Frank is going to be hosting a bunch of shows of his own, and um, we're going to be putting out a lot more stuff. So hit the subscribe button, um, hit the like button, and all those things. You're, you're not going to want to uh, miss that content. Also. Um, irisportsdaily.com. There's a ton of information on recruiting. Um, you know, 2023 is, is kind of wrapping up a little bit. Um, even though there's, uh, there's still some prospects out there that Notre Dame's hoping to land. Um, and 2024 is starting to pick up, right? July 26th is going to be, it looks like a, a big weekend for 2024 recruiting. Um, Matt Freeman and Christian McCollum have a bunch of, uh, articles out on visitors. Um, I think they just posted a couple today on uh josiah brown uh 2024 um athlete and eli bowen um the brother of peyton bowen um in 2024 as well so um you're gonna want to tune in for that and um so check that out and um with that being said i'm gonna bring on troy troy bride here how's yeah. it going how's yeah, it going, going on, man. first of all thank you for joining the show i really appreciate it um, on a Saturday and everything, and Saturday in the uh, in the summer. So uh, thanks for coming on with us. No, of course. Thank you for having me. You know, Matt's one of my guys. You know, since shoot, like I said, my freshman year. So yeah, that's um, I always show love to him, and I, like I said, I appreciate the you know opportunity to just come and talk about myself and like, like I said, my experiences. Who who doesn't want to talk about themselves, right? That's uh, <laughs> that's that's everyone's favorite thing to do. So um, first. Why don't we talk about where you are, um, where you are physically, right? So last, I think it was last off season, you uh, suffered a, a ACL injury to your knee um, that cost you the season. So where where are you at with that? How is your uh, how is your recovery going? I mean, it's going very well, honestly. Um, I was, like I said, making headway, making progress, and um, at this point, I feel like I'm, you know, probably ninety five percent. I should be running four twos here soon, um, but like I said, can run with, you know, anybody I need to right now. So um, yeah. I'm getting back to my speed, but right now that's, you know, elite speed. So that's, um, I'm still, everyone else is still kind of catching up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, speaking of that, so, so I guess it's, it's kind of a famous thing that, that you're, you were the, the most upset person who ever ran a four, four at, a, at the combine. And it seems to me that, you just missed the uh, the the resodding of like the new turf because it, so like 2019 was your year and then obviously COVID happened and then it wasn't a combine and then they I guess they redid the the turf and everything and all of a, there's all of a sudden there's four twos all over the place four ones and everything so it seems like you just missed the new track. So um actually so I came out 2020. And we actually did have a combine, so. But wait, yeah, wait, like wait. Said, oh, that's right. That is right. Yeah. Okay, so so you did, but but they, they you missed it. You missed the. Yeah, I did. I definitely missed, missed the, the resodding right. of the turf and you know making the you know field a little bit more bouncy because I remember specifically like running through like a run through at the combine, being like, bro, like this is like dug in like the it was the ground. You could feel like. That people have been running on this for years. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It was actually pretty funny, but um, you know, some people think that makes them faster. I was like, I wish it was a little bit more bouncy, but yeah, that four four doesn't haunt me because it's, it's a fast time, but it's like I said, not where I was, you know, aiming for. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, and look, track guys, you know when the track is uh, it's it's a fast track or a slow track, so I, I totally understand. Um that so, but in the meantime you've uh you've been keeping yourself busy and um i want to talk about your uh tpj uh day for play that you guys just had i think this was in may right yeah oh yeah and 
it was an amazing, this was year two of it. Um, it was just an amazing experience, man, to, like I said, organize something, you know, just me, me, my mom, um, my pops, my family, everybody just kind of getting together, doing their part and, in, in like, coming into the community. And then, obviously, um, my AD at Greer High School and mm-hmm. so many other people that helped me that, like I said, I may not mention right now, but. So many people helped put this together and to to get this done and to have, you know, kids come out and, like I said, learn a game of football, just go through drills, you know, just do so many of, like, small things that, you know, instill the love in the game, love of the game for them. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, it's such a blessing to be able to do it. And, like, you know, I want to do it as many many years as, you know, I'm capable. But, um, no, it's it's awesome. And, like I said, it, it always brings me joy to kind of go through it and to, you know, be able to interact and, go through drills myself and I said, have fun. Looked like you were having a fun time there. Um, did you, did you do any uh, camps like this when you were a kid? Like what was the kind of the inspiration that you had to, to put on a camp um, like this for kids in your area? So I actually wasn't able to do some, you know, when I was coming up, mm-hmm. um, what really like kind of ignited this for me was actually doing camps at Notre Dame. Um, they would have like, you know, like young kids, come through camps and you know the coach would just ask hey you just come help out come just be out there and it was just like such an amazing experience to be there like obviously my teammates as well who also helped me with the camp but um just to be out there and it was like it was so fun you know I used to have so much fun and then it's like man I just want to do this for my community because like I said we never had that so yeah and and it's it's great to do and it's nice to hear that uh like Notre Dame had like an influence on that. Right. Cause that's the whole kind of, kind of thing of going to Notre Dame and, you know, it opens up our opportunities and ideas and all those things. So it's, um, it's really great that you did that. Um, and we look forward to it again next year. Hopefully, hopefully that keeps going for, you know, I hope there's oh, yeah. 20 years of this. Yeah. And it's going to get bigger and better. Like we're, we're, we're getting the community involved more next year. We're going to have, you know, a lot, you know, more, like I said, people in the stands to be able to watch and mm-hmm. and just like fun activities, you know, like we get the parents involved at the end. Um, you know, the kids have games at the end. We're gonna you know, it's gonna expand and we're gonna do some more because I've got so much planned like just for the community. Mm-hmm. And um that's just because like I said, it takes a village to raise up someone to be able to go yeah. to Notre Dame and go to the league. So I wanna pour back into, you know, the community to help me to flourish. So Right. Uh, so let's let's talk about that a little bit. The the community that helped you flourish. So when did you um, when did you get in? When did you start playing football? Like as a serious thing? Uh, uh, OK. Well, it was always serious to me, especially to me and my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started when I was eight. OK. Um, that's not super young, but, you know, that was that was when like I really knew that I really wanted to play football, like for real, because. Um, there's a video of my dad. He was like, you know, just talking about my first game. He was like, man, just we're going to call you pop up because if you hit and you go down, you got to pop right back up, yeah. you know, like, you know, trying to just instill that toughness in me in the game. But I didn't end up getting hit. I think I scored a touchdown that game or something. But, man, it was just like from like early onset, I knew, hey, I love playing football. You know, it wasn't about going out there for friends or anything. It was like I really love to compete and play football. So, yeah, I started early. Taylor's youth. Association, TYA Falcons. Um, we weren't very good until my dad started coaching, but you know it was such a fun experience. So, yeah, I mean, football is definitely in a an acquired taste, I guess. Like some kids, it's for them, and some kids, it isn't. And it sounds like it was for you. Um, when did you? I guess when did you start getting uh, recruited? Like to the point? Like when did it get to the point where you thought I, this might be something that I can do? Kind of beyond. Um, you know, high school. So, yeah, so my journey was you know, very, a little rocky. Like, um, started with TYA. Like I said, my dad was coaching me for a while. And then, you know, got through middle school, you know, played well, did well. You know, teams were good, but, you know, that's obviously not high school. And I ended mm-hmm. up going to high school and um, starting my sophomore year, but we were 0-11. Didn't win a game. We're close to, like, maybe two games. But um, it didn't actually start to get, like, serious for me until I transferred high school. Uh, initially, I went to Riverside High School, and I transferred over to Greer High School, who was a little bit more, which was a big, at the time, it was like a, you know, this is before transfer portal and all that stuff. It was yeah, like yeah. a big deal like, to, to go to a different high school, and, you know, a lot of people didn't because they were scared of, 
you know, competition and, you know, being late bloomer. And I had just started as a sophomore in varsity. Hmm. So, you know, it was, it was a, a big kind of move for my family and I, and I'm, like I said, happy that my parents could, um, you know, make correct decisions like that for me because, like I said, once I went to Greer High School, I got my first offer after my junior year. And, um, you know, at that point, it, it, it took off a little bit. Like, it was it was actually pretty crazy. Like, I went from nothing. And, you know, some guys get offers a freshman year. Some guys are, you know, highly touted in middle school. But I got an offer my junior year late in the process. Um, and it was my first offer being Virginia Tech. And I remember it was crazy because I was looking at my huddle. And I had, like, 47,000 views. And I was like, hey, man, like, this is crazy, like – I never like, I don't know who is watching this. I don't know who's sharing this, but forty-seven thousand views is ridiculous. So yeah, that was kind of like my, you know, welcome to recruitment, welcome yeah, yeah, to yeah. you know publicity type of thing. So it was crazy, but uh, yeah, I was a late bloomer. First off, for being Virginia Tech, and um, really, like I said, it was just crazy. Yeah. So you so you uh, committed to them. Now was that. Was that, I guess, you, you talk about being a late bloomer and, and you were, you couldn't believe that you had that many views on your huddle. So did that contribute to, I guess, an early commitment, right? Because maybe you thought I, I, a school like Virginia Tech wants, wants me to go. And Virginia Tech is very, um, very rich uh, tradition of developing defensive backs and everything. So that's, that's a very, um, it's a prestigious program for the position that you're playing. Um, and it, they're a good program, regardless, right? With with um, with their with their former coach Frank Beamer. So, um, did did that contribute to you know kind of making an early commitment before you had kind of branched out and saw what what else was actually out there? So yeah, I think so because you know we didn't really know anything about recruitment. Like right, right. right. I got an off. I got an offer from Virginia Tech, and you know I thought everything was gonna start rolling in. It took like four or five more months. And I think maybe my second was like Marshall or somebody. Mm. And it was just kind of like, oh, well, you know, I don't really know if it'll, it'll pop off. So, you know, it was like Virginia Tech obviously showed interest in me first. So, yeah, it was kind of like a loyalty thing to like, hey, you know, I'm committed to you guys. And, and honestly, I was going to stay with it. Like I was locked mm -hmm. in. It wasn't until Coach Beamer announced he was retiring at the end of the year. So that's also when my support system, my parents come in like, me, I'm like, you know, he's retiring, whatever. Like, okay, you know, I'm still committed, you know? Yeah. And, but the fact of the matter is, they kind of understood the fact that, you know, when someone retires or when someone leaves, you know, sometimes the staff doesn't always go with them. Like, mm. it's, it's always this, like, you know, jumble up, toss up of things. Um, and so it was, it was such an interesting story, right? Because, um, and I'm skipping ahead a little bit to this, but like, so I ended up decommitting, right? Right. And um, because of that staff issue, because of that uncertainty, I'd ask my coach that I was there for, can you assure me that you're going to be there? He was like, I can't. So we ended up decommitting. The funny thing is, is like we had had a little bit of an issue with um, one of the you know, other coaches because, you know, they were mad that we were still taking visits, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and But I was still locked in with the DB coach that I had, Victorian Gray. Right. Well, it turns out on signing day that year, like if I stayed committed to them on signing day, he ended up leaving mm. like to go to Florida. So I would have basically been there stuck with coaches that kind of looked at me a little crazy at, at one point and, you know, weren't really all the way for me. So I would have been like such a like a foreign situation because, like I said, there's so much instability or instability with, you know, college coaches when a new coach comes in and stuff like that. So, yeah, man, it's crazy. Like that's that's such a like a. Uh, a thing that I harp on because, you know, if my support system wasn't feeding me like, hey, you know, we can't guarantee he's going to be there. We need to go somewhere where, you know, it is a little bit more stable. And, yeah. You know, I'm, no, good. You can go. But, and, and I'm so young, I didn't even know. So, yeah. It just goes to show you that, yeah, like, support system, like, means everything, honestly. Yeah. So, I actually, <laughs> I actually, you just triggered something in my mind because that, that similar thing happened to me when I went to uh, Long Beach State to run track. I had been recruited by this um, our sprint coach. Uh, her name was Donna Waller, and she talked to me for you know months and months and months. And we want you to come, and she called me all the time, and and it was like okay. So I went to uh, it was like orientation, right? Like uh, like a couple weeks before this uh, 
the fall semester was supposed to start. And I was like, where's coach Donna? And she went to Colorado. And I was like, okay. That's- Man. Like, <laughs> and, and that's what I'm saying. Like you're riding for like, they're recruiting you. They're going yeah. crazy. You know, they're calling you. It's all this in the third. And you're like, Hey, you know, it's all love. I, I know I got you. And then, like you said, like on a signing day type of thing, he say, "Hey, I'm sliding somewhere else." Now you like, well, I don't know who the coach is going to be, you know, what's going to happen, blah blah blah. Everything's up in the air. Yeah. And I mean, and guys adjust, you know, because it happens so much. But I just couldn't, or my, we weren't comfortable doing that or risking that. Yeah. Um, going into a place where I needed to develop. So. And it, I mean, obviously, it worked out. Um, t- tell me how Notre Dame uh, came into the picture then. Ah, uh, Notre Dame. So it was um, Coach Denson, Archie Denson. He was there. At the time okay. As the running back. So, All right. So but there's an interesting story. Now I don't. He's never told me this. This is kind of what I guesstimated. Okay. Um, I think that he was recruiting me at first because they wanted me to play offense. Or they thought I could play offense. Okay. Because in high school I did both. You know, I was moving around. You know, I, my senior year I never came off the field. So right. I think he was recruiting me first because I think he wanted me to play offense. Okay. Well, um, like I ended up like, you know, just kind of like doing whatever. But he was so instrumental in my recruitment that obviously led to, you know, Coach Light coming and talking to me and everything. But Coach Denson was so cool with, like I said, the people that were around me and, and how he did business and how he talked about Notre Dame and how he, you know, you know, sold Notre Dame to us. Like, I mean, obviously everybody knows about Notre Dame, but like right. selling it to us was like a big thing. Like he was talking about, I remember I brought up one school to him, like, hey, you know, they said they're good at academics too and they can do it. He was like, people at that school work for people that went to Notre Dame. Like, so that was one start. Then it was like, I went there and I did this and, you know, I, you know, was here. I, we made it to the, like, we did every, I did everything that you wanted, that you would want to do as a student athlete. So, like, I know, you know, the ways to coach you through it and help you through everything. And then it was, um, you know, the faith aspect too, like, mm-hmm. you know, a godly man like that, that can preach those values and stand on them and, you know, be that. And we still, you know, him and my parents still talk to this day. You know, I can still reach out to him whenever I want to. I can still mm-hmm. talk to him whenever I want to. And that's the type of genuine relationship I made early on with me and Coach Denson. And then same with Coach Light. Like, I, I think I called him the other day, just like talking different business stuff and, and just about, you know, yeah. so much stuff. So Notre Dame was genuine, though. Like, they came in. They weren't trying to sit up here and sway me and, and cheat me or do anything. They were just like, hey, this is what we offer. This is who we are. And we would love for you to be a part of it. If not, cool, whatever you do, what you do. But that was that was huge. And then going on my visit, it solidified everything. Yeah. And um, so, so okay, so you, you choose Notre Dame. You show up in 2016, and the 2016 season that had to have been kind of a like a like a whoa, what's going on? You know, because uh, on the one hand, right, you 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 got a chance to play because of you know there were there were injuries and and circumstances and that sort of thing, so you got a chance to play. Um, but it's kind of like an infamous everything went wrong season, right? So um, Sean Crawford gets hurt. Um, you know that there's a there's a, a bunch of other injuries. I think um, I, I think who who who? Why can't I think of his name? The the other corner. So you had Devin Butler. I think got kicked out. Nick Watkins was hurt. Um, Watkins was hurt. The, the, Sean was was hurt. You, you had me, Julian, and Dante that had to come in and play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the freshmen. They're the freshmen, and and so you came in. And I oh, guess Cole Luke, Cole, Cole Luke. Luke that, why, man, that's it really bothers me that I couldn't think of his name. Um, and he was kind of the elder statesman on that team. And yeah. so, wh- how did you process that, right? Because it, it not a successful season, right? Like famously, kind of a disaster, like record wise in terms of like uh, losing to Duke and dropping like a like a heartbreaker early to Texas. And um, losing a bunch of close games, like in the fourth quarter and that sort of thing. Like, how did you process the team not being successful, but you getting a chance to play? Like, how how did you how did you process that? I think truly and honestly, that season laid the foundation for the moves that Notre Dame is making now. Right. Like, 
from, like I said, our 2016 class getting an opportunity to be in there and play, understanding, hey, we hate losing. You know, we hate being a part of this. We hate going into a locker room. We feel like we haven't put in the work enough to win. And I feel like that truly laid the foundation for everybody understanding, hey, we're never going back to this. Like me playing, Julian, Dante, Jalen Elliott, um, Dalen Hayes, everybody that mm-hmm. played, like, that went in there and, and made any kind of contribution. It was kind of like, all right, well, now we got to, you know, put in the work in the offseason to step up next year and be ready to go mm-hmm. next year. And then, I mean, and then, like, just the, the whole team was like, all right, yeah, we're not going to, we're not, you know, standing for that. But just our class, like, kind of even leading the way, like, so many dudes began to make contributions for even next year, like, into – making Notre Dame what it should be. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it was a terrible season, and it was tough, you know. You know, me trying to navigate that and, you know, like I said, having so many welcome to college football moments, like playing Navy and getting blown up um, yeah. and losing the Navy. Like, um, not even traveling to Texas, but watching that game at the Goo, seeing us lose and kind of being heartbroken. Like, um, going to USC and playing, you know, them, you know, taking the L there, but thinking, man, we can beat those guys. You know, in my head, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, man, we should have beat those guys. Like, every game, like, kind of built a new kind of level, of, first of all, of experience, of toughness, of understanding, hey, this is what it takes to actually win and be successful. And I think that, that did something for everybody, every young guy that played, and then everybody that was just in and around the team. Because at that point, like I said, we – now what is it, five, six wins – Six plus year, ten win seasons. Yeah, like that's like I said that that obviously snapped into everything that we needed, you know, to be successful. Now, tell me about not traveling to a game because that has to be just the craziest thing for you because you like you just said you played both ways, never came off the field as a senior in high school in your first game. Like, what is it to because I. Every time I, I hear about, like, I know it's something that happens, right? And, and a lot of, like, gr- good players like yourself, um, this is something that happens to them as freshmen. But what was that like for you in the moment to just, like, I am not traveling, my team has a football game, and I am not going? Like, what was that like for you? I mean, it was crazy. Um, yeah. And the, the funny thing is, um, I think I've told this story before, but my mom had brought tickets to go to Texas. Because yeah. she was like, I believe in you that you're going to travel. Yeah. Like she literally believed that. You know, and she told me this like the week prior. So, you know, I'm working as hard as I can to be like, all right, let me get yeah. on this bus. Like, let me try to do this. And then, like I said, I saw the travel roster come out after practice one day, man. And I saw it. I mean, and you know, I didn't really know, but I was hoping that I was on it. And I wasn't. And, like, I remember just, like, kind of sitting in my locker and just, like, you know, giving, like, a quick cry of just, like, dang, like. This, this hurts because I know my mom's going to the game and I know I want to be there too, yeah. but I know that, you know, I might not be all the way ready yet. So, yeah, man, it hurt because, yeah, I mean, you know, you're a man in high school, you know, you did everything, you know. And now, like I said, um, you got to keep working. And, and But that was what it was for me. Now I was like, mm-hmm. all right. Like I think that when they traveled the next day, I got up like that morning, was in the goo working out that morning. I think it was like the morning of the game. And then, like I said, I sat in the Google and watched the game. And then, you know, you just kept up the work, like extra work. Like I was out there yeah. late. I was out there, you know, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't a deterrent for me. Like I wasn't heart, like I was heartbroken, yeah. but I was like, well, I don't want to feel like this again. So I'm going to keep going. Like I'm going to keep going harder. And eventually, like I said, got an opportunity to play that year. Um, but, man, it was tough. You know, I, can, I can't lie. Yeah. It, was, it was crazy. Well, I, I, I can totally imagine. Like I, I, I always, anytime I hear about it, I always think, God, that's gotta be so like just a weird experience. Right. Like not maybe, maybe a player understands, but it just in the moment, it's got, it's gotta be the toughest thing. Um, so, okay. So you, so you transitioned from 16 to 17. Tell me about the arrival of Matt Bayless and what that was like, because you had, you had a, you had a full season with yeah. one staff and then Matt Bayless comes in. And not just that, but the program is already, like, there's already urgency, you know, because of what yeah. happened, the the big staff change. Um, 
so tell me the the arrival of Bayless, the first you know winter uh, winter workout, like all of that. What what was that experience like? Um, it was amazing. I mean, obviously it was it was the toughest thing that probably a lot of people have gone through. But he told right. us like when he first got there, he was like, "Listen, there's a lot of people that's not gonna make it through this, like for real." Like he he was he was like bluntly honest, and I don't think everybody realized it. He was like. Some people are going to quit. They're not going to make it through this. And like I said, you you saw it happen. Like, oh, yeah, I'm transferring. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Boom, boom, yeah, yeah, boom. Yeah. And it was crazy because it's like he said it. And he, like, meant it. Like, it was, you know, 5 a.m. We're starting in the weight room. Like, it was, you know, go as hard as you possibly can. Like, no questions about it. Like, go everything you got. And the crazy thing is, is that, as he came in and I had to do everything with Bayless, I was also running track, you know, that same spring. Like I was double dipping. And I told him early because I remember like when I first met him, so I met him in his office, you know, kind of before everybody Mm -hmm. because I was running track. Mm -hmm. He was like, you're still going to do everything. Like, I don't like, I know you want to run track. Like that's, you're not here for track though. Like you're, we're, you're on scholarship football. So you're going to do everything in here. And if you have a meet, we'll work around it. This in the third, but, but yeah, man, it was it was wild. Like Coach Bayless, like I said, but once again, set that tone for the rest of you know now Notre Dame history. Like changed everything, you know, changed everybody's mindset, changed everybody's you know grit, changed everybody's you know level of you know attack. Like just just shifted that whole you know mm-hmm. realm of thinking to where now, like even the young guys that come in now, there's a standard that you have to be at. And he knows when you're not meeting it. And, and the players know when you're not meeting it. And you won't last if you're not going to meet the standard. Like, if you're, if you're not hungry, you're not starving, you satisfied, you chilling, like I said, you ain't going to make it out. So, But it was, it was a, like, it was amazing looking back on it in the moment. It was crazy. Because like I said, I've never done anything like that. never mm-hmm. did harder workouts in my life. But after the fact, now you look at it and you're like, man, that dude is like the real deal. And like I said, he's my dog forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's everyone. Everyone says that, right? And I remember um, this last off season when, when obviously there was a, a ton of turmoil and turnover, and there was like a 48 hour period when I think fans and you know maybe you. I mean, what we're, I'm going to get into this with you later more so, but um, when people are talking about what needs to happen to kind of keep the program together. It was Matt Bayless all the time. Right. And every player you spoke with or every player you heard from, it was like, they need to keep Matt Bayless. Like he is, he is basically the culture, right? Mm-hmm. If, if you keep Matt Bayless around then then you keep the culture and, and you're just kind of confirming what everyone else um, has said. Um, tell me about the, the, the track. I mean, cause so you're, you're doing both right. And you wanted to keep up track. Right. And, and, you know, you were, you were, what year was it that you were uh, a finalist in the 60 meters indoor for the ACC? What year was this? Was it 17 uh, or was it 18? Uh, I think it was, I think it was 17. It might've been 18. I was, I was a finalist like two different years. It was, I, I forgot which year it was specifically. It might've been 17, but uh, I'm thinking it would, it would probably be 18 because I was a little bit stronger, a little bit better. Um, but no, nah, man, track was, like I said, a great experience in itself, too. Like, um, And I would encourage more guys to, you know, even step out there and do that. Right. Like, you see like, the speed that even that they're recruiting in now. I think there's a guy that ran, like, a, what, 10-4? Michael Bell, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, you know, I would, you know, encourage him, hey, bro, why, I mean, why can't you run track? You'd be the best sprinter. Um, mm-hmm. So it's just like, um, it was just a, a different level, like, you know, I get a chance to still compete in the off season. I get a chance to still, you know, work on, you know, the craft of getting faster, of, you know, working on, you know, every just just a competition level for real. Mm-hmm. Like these guys are training all year. I come in, I'm training, you know, a little bit and I still shine and win. Like that's that's probably does something to them, but for more for more, it's like does something for me. Like, hey, I'm really, you know, that guy. So Did you ever compete outdoors? Yeah, so I did indoor and outdoor up until my senior year. Got it, got it. Um, 
were you anything would do i'm trying to recall i know you did the this like the short sprints did you were you were you still doing the 200 and that sort of thing yeah so i did indoor 6200 and okay. the outdoor was one and two never wanted I, like i was a 400 runner in high school but i couldn't train for it for real like, yeah I yeah yeah that way now, I was going to say that the, the weight training issue is probably was probably very prohibitive for the 400. Yeah. So I only did one uh, four by four. How did that go? It was my fastest one ever. That was, really? like, that was like my last, that was my last race. And like truly my last race, my track career. And it was my best one ever. It was actually ridiculous. I Wait, like, did, you, did you mean like 47 something? I went 46 flat Ooh. split. Whoa. Like, it was crazy because we were in last when I got the baton. I was the second leg. We were in last when I got the baton. So I'm running, staying in my lane up until yeah. that, you know, break point. So I'm sprinting when I get there. I break in. I'm in like fifth. That back stretch, I pass three more people. I'm in second at this point. I'm about to pass the dude in first, but he like cut me off a little uh, bit. Oh, yeah. So I had to kind of like drift. Yeah. And like I said, pass the baton up in second, and we stand up getting last. But 46 flat, I was like, hey, I mean, you know, I did everything I could. <laughs> so this would have been the second leg then. You were you were the number two guy. Yeah, I was. Now, in high school, I was either fourth or whatever. But, yeah, for Notre Dame, I was second leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just I'm just thinking because of the when the, you cut in from the stagger. Damn, 46 flat, that's. That's legit right there. Like that's you. I mean, that's like you are running like sub 21 second 200 style. Yeah. You know I mean? It was wild. Like, like I said, it was all adrenaline mostly. And it was just like, I want to win. So yeah. like I went all out. Like this was like, I was, I probably was down until the end, last person finished because like I said, I went, I gave everything I got. Like it was yeah. my last race. And I didn't even know it was going to be my last race, but it was. Yeah. I, was like, I gave everything I got. So you probably. <laughs> <laughs> you, I bet you're more, uh, like of all the things you've done and you've accomplished a lot of things. I bet you that forty six flat is like way up there in your like in your mind and career accomplishments. It would be for me if I ever. Let me tell you, I, I ran forty eight eight and I was like, this is the greatest thing that ever happened, and no one really cares, you know, because yeah. it's track and like no one has a good uh, idea for it. Man, I, I I I went back to school and I was telling people like I ran forty eight eight and everyone's like, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't really understand. But yeah, man, it was like I said to to not have trained for it at all, to to have been known as a sprinter, then just saying, "Hey, bro, just go win the four by four. We just want to see." And to go out and do that, it was it was pretty substantial. Um, to the point where they had asked me to do the the distance medley relay. Yeah. Uh, for the team that ended up winning gold. Um. I forgot where, but they got a national or they got a national championship ring mm -hmm. for the DMR. So they wanted me to do the four hundred for that. Yeah, so I was like, I can't. Like I truly, like don't want to train for it. Yeah, I can't cut weight because I'm playing football, and I would just kind of be a hindrance. But they ended up, they still won gold, so I probably would have been a national champion on the distance made the relay team if I had just done it. But I was like, I can't. Like I've literally yeah, yeah. got to play football. So yeah. All right, so um. All right, so let's get back on the football uh, track. So, so 2017. Now, this mm -hmm. is something I'm interested in because people, I think, don't have a good sense for like w once you break camp and the season starts, it's it, practice is at least in my experience. Maybe this is different for at Notre Dame, something like that. But once you break camp and 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 the season starts and everything, practice is about is about game planning. It's about knowing like we have an opponent, like a specific opponent, like working on the game plan and work like player development kind of takes a back seat at that point. Mm -hmm. And for you, your your breakout game was against Navy in 2017 when I think Nick Watkins was either injured or Maybe you were a, a better matchup against Navy in that particular game, but you worked your way into the uh, into the lineup late in the season, which is kind of rare, right? Mm -hmm. How did how did you um, how did you mentally, I guess, go into every single week? Because am am I am I accurate in saying like player development kind of takes a back seat 
in terms like it's hard to jump people on the depth chart once the season starts and you're not getting a ton of snaps like is that is that an accurate no nah, it is it say? is because yeah like you've got to kind of do it it's got to kind of be like from you like at this point coaches aren't sitting here staying after with you to do stuff because they've got to go game plan or they've got to go do this or they've got to go crew or they've got to go be with their families mm-hmm. so now like i said you've got to work yourself and you've got to so this this all goes back to even 2016 of like you know having that bad year, but still understanding you know the work that needs to be put in. So 2017 I wasn't playing for real like at all. I played a little bit in the USC game because um, Nick got hurt or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, but I wasn't playing. But the grind never stopped. Like I was still after practice just about every day. I was still working on certain th- parts of my game that you know, weren't all the way there. And I knew that, you know, I wasn't this guy, that, you know, they just throw out there first, like, hey, you know, we chose him and, you know, that's who we're going with. I was never that guy. So it was like, I got to truly put in the work every single day. And when I get my opportunity, you know, take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what it was. And it was, maybe it wasn't this week. Maybe it wasn't this week. You know, it ended up, like I said, getting a chance to start against Miami. We obviously got, you know, beat pretty bad that game yeah um so it's still like damn like i'm i'm almost there but you know i'm not really getting there then you know like i said that navy game comes i get my first interception in a crucial moment in the game um but you know i was on such a high that i almost like i said on the back end could have potentially let them tie it up so it's kind of like it it brought me back in like hey there's still always more work to be done even when you think that, hey, I just did something great. And this is on the reverse pass, right? Yeah. Damn, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep, at the end because my eyes are bad. So it's like I got to pick. You know, I'm thinking, oh, the game's sealed. Nah, like you got to go back out there and get one more stop. Mm-hmm. And in that one more stop, you still got to be good as when you got the pick and every play before that. So it was it was kind of always that, you know, realization for me that, like, hey, like keep working, stay humble, keep going. It'll work out when it needs to. So that's what 2017 was for me, for real, because, yeah, like, I wasn't playing. I could have said, hey, man, I'm just going to transfer. You know, it's whatever yeah. at this point. Um, but, you know, that's not how we were built. Our class wasn't. And that's not how, you know, I'm wired mentally. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's what it was. Um, so, yeah, that was like a test. That was kind of like a prove it, like, you know, prove that you're, you know, willing to attack the grind. and be ready for situations that, you know, aren't in your favor, but, you know, you can still make it happen. Yeah, because just um, from, I guess, a fan, I guess, conventional wisdom point of view, like from the 2016 class, you were like the third guy originally, right? Because Julian came in, was playing a lot. And then um, Dante Vaughn came in and he was playing a lot. Mm-hmm. And, and you were like the third one, you know, and – and then Julian, obviously, he he starts all of 2017, and he he like sets like an NCAA record for like breakups, and and it was kind of like it's like it was like anytime the conversation came up with DBs, it was always like and Troy Pride, right? Like kind of mm-hmm. the last one brought up, and then um you came out in the in the in the second half of the year, like not even second half, like last third of the year, um and kind of blew up from there, and then from there you, you hit the ground running, right? Like you use 2017 as a springboard in the 2018. Um, and that's when you really took off, um, had, had a great season, started every game. Um, tell me about that. I mean, tell me about the, like, did you ever, did you ever lose confidence? Did you ever feel like maybe it won't happen for me? Right. And then you get into 2018 and all of a sudden, all of a sudden it does like, were there ever moments where you felt like, I don't know if I can do this. I mean, for sure, there, there, there are moments where you doubt. You know, there's moments where – because, like I said, starting 2017, I was kind of buried because I think Nick Coleman was still playing corner, I think. Uh, you had Nick Watkins that was coming back. Yeah. You had Julian, who they believed in and they were, you know, riding with. You had Sean, who was coming back. Mm-hmm. Like, like Dante, like I said, was ahead of me. He's, you know, a different style of corner. So – and they liked his style a little bit more. So, yeah, man, I was buried for a while. <laughs> Um, and yeah, you think about it, but like, that's never like deterred me from putting in the work to be great. Like, yeah. 
that's never going to sit there and tell me, oh, well, you know, I can't do it. Like, nah, like, because for real, like, there's somebody that was in my situation. Even now, like, I think about it now. Like, I still think about that same stuff now. There's somebody in my, that had my same situation that killed it. There's somebody that made it happen from exactly what I'm going through. So why can't I? Like, and that's the same thing. Like, there were guys that have been buried before. There are guys that have been, you know, not thought of before. But, hey, you know, you go change people's minds. Like, the coaches in 2017 thought I was a track guy. That's what they told me before, you know, some of them left. They thought I was just a track guy. They thought, you know, I wasn't willing to put my nose in the, you know, do this and the third, all this all this extra stuff. But it was on me to prove them wrong. It was on me to, to say, hey, nah, like, I'm tough. You know, I'm I'm this guy. You know, I'm I'm willing to be here. Like, if you, you know, get me there, I'm going all the way, you know. So, yeah, there was moments of doubt. But I think that, you know, my mindset has always been I can do anything, you know. So why not put the work in to do whatever I want to do? So, yeah, man, that, I think was, that, was a, that was a crazy year. You just gave, like, the quote of the pod right now. Like, because that's such good advice. Like, you, there is someone who has been in my exact situation who went out and killed it. So why can't I? And I, and I think that's a great um, – that's a great lesson. That's a great message, like for everybody, like for in anything, right? Whether it's football or anything. Like, and my my my, uh, my father in law told me something one time, or he actually he told my wife, right? So he was talking to my wife about something, and he was like, "Lesser people have have done it." She, I, I don't know what she was talking about, but she was like, "Lesser people have done the thing that you're trying to do. So why can't mm-hmm. you do it?" And it's like, yeah, right. So, and so I think your perspective um, is is a great one. Um, and so 2018, I mean, that is famously one of the best defenses in the last, I don't know, 20 years, right? You guys like basically propelled, um, propelled yourselves onto a playoff run, right? And yeah, and uh, you know, close games against you know Michigan, obviously. So you guys held Michigan to 17 points. You, you held obviously Ball State, which you would expect to do, but um, yeah. held Vander. Hey. Held- hey. They was lighting us up, man. They was on it. Was <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I, 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 so tell me about that then, right? So tell me about about your playing. So you just beat Michigan, right? Yeah. Like be, under the lights, Michigan, like top whatever team they were, right? like 10th or 11th or 12th or whatever they were, right? You just beat them. The next week you come in and – it's like you're playing ball state and why can't we get stops? Like, why are they, why do they continue to move the ball? Like, tell me about the, the kind of the shift in, in your mindset, right? Like what is going through your mind in the moment of the game? Like, why can't we stop these guys? I mean, it was, it was crazy for real. Cause yeah, like I remember hearing stuff like they want to field your COVID to play and you know, guys was ready to, be done by the third quarter. Man, Ball State wasn't here. None of it. And that just goes to show you that, and that's football, like, and that's yeah. life too. Like, where you relax, anybody can, you know, give you work. And that's that was what was happening. We were, I think we were relaxing a little bit too much. We was on a high. We beat Michigan. Everybody was happy. Fans was rocking. You know, everybody, like I said, all the chatter yeah. was here. And, yeah, we relaxed a little bit. And um, like I said, it, it took us to really say, look, bro, like we worked way too hard to sit up here and be that kind of team, that eight and five, that, you know, seven and seven type of team. We were way too hard to do that. So, you know, I think from the leadership down, it was kind of like, hey, man, we got to figure this out. We got to figure this out right now. We got to figure out who we want to be. We got to figure out what we want to do. And boom, 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 tough, gritty, hard nose game that we came out with. Like, Shouldn't have been that close, not at all, you know. But them boys came to play, and, and mm-hmm. you got to. Res- I respect them for that. But then, like I said, when we responded, when we made it happen, we just won that game. That was, you know, what we needed to say, look, bro, you relax, anybody can beat you. But when you keep your foot on the gas, when we go as hard as we can, when we realize how hard we've worked and what we've done, we can't let nobody come and take it. So that was – um. That was a big lesson in the season, yeah. too, because, yeah, it was like, you beat Michigan. Oh, yay. But then it's like, you lose to Ball State. Don't nobody care about Michigan no more. And you look crazy. So, yeah. it was, um, that was, yeah, that was a turning point, too. So, you just, you just kind of reminded me of something, like, talking about, you know, how Ball State didn't care and that sort of thing. And, and 
it it got me thinking about like your kind of come up between you, you know like 17 and 18 right so we see a lot of players like every recruiting class Notre Dame brings in players and sometimes you know they're 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 high four star five star guys and sometimes they're mid three star guys right and you look at them and you, and you look at any any recruit and you look at their highlights and you say okay this is what he could be right and sometimes it um it works out and sometimes it doesn't what is the differentiator between the guys who ultimately break through like yourself and the guys who kind of don't and they need to go find another kind of situation for themselves like what's the difference because i feel like you know i'm just going to throw out a name and it, and it has nothing it's like no disrespect to the player or anything like mm -hmm. that um Ken, kendall abdul rahman right mm -hmm. you see him in practice and you hear about him making plays in practice he's making plays in practice what is the what is the differentiator between like you can make plays in practice and you can actually go out against the Michigans, the other team's best guys and, and make plays. Like what is the differentiator there? Um, so I would say 75% of it's mindset, like in, in truly just saying, I don't care who is across from me. Like I'm a ball if I'm going to ball. And mm -hmm. I think the rest of it's like situation. So obviously you got to have that mindset to be, hey, I'm that guy, regardless of who's across from me. I'm that, I'm that guy when I do this. I'm that guy when I shoot, you know, a, a paper ball into the trash can. I'm that guy when I play tic-tac-toe. I'm that guy when – so it's 75% it's that. But then, you know, it is a situation too like, hey, this coach trusts me to be out there. This coach says, Troy gave up a catch. Don't worry about it. When it, when it matters, he's going to, you know, make the play. Like – and, you know, sometimes guys don't have that. Sometimes guys might have that. Sometimes guys, you know, they're wishy-washy with it. So that's like the situation part of it because, yeah, like he, he like he, he can, he, he can ball. Like he can play. He can do everything. You, like, and you know that because he's at Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. But like just some things, you know, it's just like, and you see with even Joe Burrow, like Joe Burrow was, like I said, Ohio State probably said, all right, bro, get out of here. Like whatever. But he go to LSU, you know, puts the work in, does what he needs to do, has that mindset. He goes out there and, like I said, makes, you know, one of the best seasons college football has ever seen. So, like, a little bit of a situation, but you got to have that mindset along with it. So, yeah, for me to, to kind of go from, like I said, a guy that was potentially could have been a transfer guy or left guy to, you know, a starter and, you know, playing for Notre Dame was kind of like, hey, I got that mindset, but then it's like my situation worked out. I had coach life for four years. Um, you know, we changed defense coordinators a lot, but, you know, ended up with, you know, Coach Lee and a great dude that, like I said, believed in me and, and instilled in me and, and, and put every part of his, you know, life into me. And, um, yeah, man, like that, that situation helped because, yeah, like guys don't trust you or guys can't, you know, or, or you can't, you know, relate personally. and all that 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 affects like i said a lot of guys careers so yeah and and so okay so you 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 take it you run with it uh two year starter go, go to the playoffs right um go play at georgia which seemed like a heck of a heck of an atmosphere and i was just watching that game last night tell okay it came out with that one it was man it was it was uh it's tough, man. It you know, it, came out like, like I said. So once again, this thing of they went on a run. They were up like fourteen or something like that, and it was almost like, oh, no, they ain't gonna quit. Nah, like we were still rocking in it. Like I said, I remember getting that stop on a uh, picking. Yeah, we got the ball like the fifty from like a bad punt. And we was thinking like, hey, it's time. Like let's go. And yeah. you know, it didn't work out, but um. Still, yeah, man, like I said, that's um that's the type of guy that we have that we had. And it was um and, and still have. Um right. but like it's that was crazy too because you're like reminiscing on that moment. It was kinda like yeah, we could have quit a while ago. Like when they went up touchdown, I think, you know, it was twenty three ten they were up. Yeah, it was the yeah, they were up like two touchdowns. It was we could have been like, Well, you know, it, it was a tough one, but but nah, we went at it. 
scored another tug, and then just couldn't get that last one. But still, they felt us. Yeah, they did. And, and you know what's funny is like every time, every time, right? Like even Clemson after the after the playoff game, it was uh, yeah, yeah, like we were afraid of Notre Dame, right? Like they were the ones that we felt like were the tougher matchup. Um, even against Alabama and then Georgia said kind of similar things, right? Like, and I think you see the, the, the celebration that Georgia had in 17 and 19 with both really close games. Like, I think they knew like that they were on the brink, right? It was like not mm -hmm. pulling it out and then they end up doing it. And that obviously catapulted to them, the great seasons. Um, so, okay. So to, to your starter on to the NFL, right? Fourth round pick. Yep. And, mm -hmm. uh, Obviously, that had to have been, I mean, a moment where, like, it all comes full circle, right? It just kind of, it comes together for you. Um, you know, take me through that. Like, take me how that felt. Uh, that's crazy, man. It's, it's, uh, it's a wave of emotions for sure because, mm -hmm. you know, like, you're going through the whole draft process, you know, trying to do your best. Something's just out of your control. Yeah, yeah. You can't even, like, you don't know how, how one team might feel about you or, you know, you just slotted here and you see mock drafts here, this and the third, and it's, it's a lot. But, um, you know, the thing is, is it's like I was so happy to obviously be drafted and to, you know, so blessed to be in that position. But it felt the same because it was like, you know, the work still didn't stop. Like, you get to a, I mean, and it goes, just goes to show you now, like, I was a draft pick, whatever, whatever, I got cut after my second year. Like you know, into a four-year contract, mm. so it, it doesn't stop there. Like I, I didn't get drafted and say I made it. Nah, like I still got to work, and I was still working. Obviously, I got hurt, unforeseen um, circumstances, but still, it's now you know I got to work harder to go to another spot, get on a team, you know, whatever role that is, and hopefully, like I said, iron out the career that I want because mm. you know it's still up to me, and that's the thing that you know I don't think a lot. Of, I mean. At some point, it's not up, but the work that I put in, how hard I work, how much I give every day is going to get me to where I need to be yeah. and, and or at least have me to where I know that, you know, you can't tell me that I didn't put in the work. You can't mm -hmm. tell me that I didn't give everything I had. So, mm -hmm. yeah, man, it's, it was it was elation, you know, to be drafted, obviously to stay home, you know, uh, wonderful, you know, to be able to, like I said, drive home whenever I felt like it to see my parents or Mm -hmm. having them come up for the holidays. Um, but the work still didn't stop and it hasn't stopped and it won't stop because mm -hmm. I know who I want to be. I know where I want to be and I'm not stopping until I get there. And you've already done it, right? You've already done the thing that you want. So I think that's got to be like super reinforcing for you. Um, all right. I don't want to keep you too much longer, but I, I, I did want, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about the, uh, the whole BK thing, right? Like, so, uh, so yeah, how did to get into it a little bit? <laughs> no, no, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I have to ask because I, that whole situation for me was one of the most out of the blue things that I, I can ever, I, I just did not, I got a text message. It, actually, I, I, I got a text and it was like a link to like someone's tweet. And I was like, what is this? I sent it to yeah. Matt. I sent it to Matt and Matt was like, I'm on it. And I was like, what? You're on it? Like, is there, there's something to be on with this? So yeah. um, that's kind of how it started. Like, how did, how did you take it in? Like, were you shocked? Were you, how did you feel about it? It was, it was wild. Like I had, you know, fans sending me, it's just real. Like I had people, like I said, I knew at Notre Dame, like what's going on? Like, yeah. and to me, I'm sitting here like, nah, there's no way. Like, cause I had heard like some rumor or whatever. I'm like, nah, there's no way. Like that's, that's totally out of left field. Like, that doesn't even make sense. But, yeah, man, it was crazy. And then, but, like, the way it was kind of handled, too, was a little bit even worse. Because, I mean, you know, you think, you know, you spent a good amount of time here that, you know, that guy loved the place. And, and, and I'm sure he did. But just the way, you know, everything was done and went about, it was kind of like, ah, it just left, like, a bad taste in your yeah. mouth. Because, yeah. like, you know, you're thinking that, you know, just as much as the players are giving it their all and, and doing everything they can to win, that the coaches would be doing the same. But really for them, sometimes it's just a business. And that even showed through with Lincoln Riley, going to, you know, yeah. USC like he did, like leaving those Oklahoma players and taking transfers, whatever, whatever. Um, but 
Um, you know, you can only be upset for a little bit because, like I said, we got, you know, a gym and Coach Freeman, and it's it's amazing to see what he's doing, amazing to see what he's going to do because I think that this man is really going to be successful for Notre Dame. I think he really loves the school. I think the players love him. I think that he's everything that we need to take that next step and that next level. So, you know, you, you hark on the bad time a little bit, but to look towards the future is like, yeah. Go. Yeah, so what I guess have you been around the program since uh Coach Freeman was was hired? Um so I went back for the pro day and met Coach Freeman. Okay. But I haven't had a chance to you know do much else yet because like I said my situation Oh yeah, all for over. sure. But you've been around. So so I guess what what do you think was missing? Like what was missing, right? I I and it's I feel weird asking you that cuz you were a part of that. So I so I, yeah. it's almost like you know, like, like even it's like, oh the recruiting right like well you were a recruit like it's not like it's not like we don't need more Troy Prides right so um, I guess what what but do you I, think? But I think it was I think to start it was kind of just effort and then a little bit of genuineness like so on recruiting you talk about effort yeah. Coach Freeman said they want to be the hardest working recruiting team in the country and now they're like had hey, what first twenty twenty three class first twenty twenty four class like as of now so yeah, yeah, hopefully yeah. it stays that way but still like. Dang, like all he said was we're gonna just put in more effort and they started having them more in classes. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's cool. But then like, you know, like I said, I met Coach Freeman. He was he was at Pro Day. He was, you know, he's done so much. Like he's, you know, congratulating the Notre Dame baseball team when they get back from, you mm-hmm. know, their World Series trip and stuff like that. Like just like a genuine dude, like that you see and can be like, you know, that face that you, know, you truly you just want to shake his hand, like you just want to chat it up, you know. You want to just talk ball with him, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever. And um, you know, I don't, I don't know if that was always there with you know the previous head coach, um, especially just from my perspective because you know I was I was there when you know sometimes you just thought Coach Bayless was your head coach, you know. Um, but you know I just think that yeah, Coach Freeman is just you know a different energy, man. A different mm-hmm. he played, you know, he was he went to Ohio State and was a linebacker and. He knows the grind. He knows that struggle. He's done it at a high level. He's personable. He's, you know, someone that, you know, is likable um, and, you know, does obviously a good job on that football field, you know, yeah. coaching up defenses, you know, having schemes, having, you know, what he needs to be successful. So, yeah, I just think that, you know, it's just a little bit of a change. And, you know, I'm obviously – very respectful to Coach Kelly because, you know, he gave me my opportunity. Mm-hmm. And we obviously won a lot of good games there. But right. Coach Freeman, I think, is the real deal. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put up a question here from Alaskan. Do you know uh, – do you have any opinion on uh, Coach Mickens? He's a cornerback coach. He, he came after you You, you were, but uh, – Yeah, yeah. And he was he's, he was with Coach Freeman in Cincinnati. Yeah. And, you know, I think that, like I said, he's doing, you know, the best job he can too and has been – like I said, a good deal too, because when I went back for the pro day, I got a chance to talk to the to the guys that were currently in the room and just, you know, give my input on, you know, what I think it takes, you know, to win at Notre Dame, you know, being there, winning and, you know, losing there. So I think Coach Mickens, like I said, is, is right on page. You know, we sat through, you know, their whole film session. I, like I said, listening to his coaching points and you know, he, he's, he's got a good style to him. He's got a good way of speaking to individuals. It's not berating he's not you know cussing everybody out it's like you know he talks to you like a man he respects you and i think that's you know throughout the whole coaching staff and i think that's why those guys want to play for them and i think that's why they're going to be successful okay all right uh i'll just put up another comment from michael morris you're a great player we sure miss you um armand i hope, you I, got, I hope they got the next one in uh who is it you said michael bell michael bell and Fourth. christian gray yeah tempo I hope he, so he might be the next one. Shoot. <laughs> he, so he he's supposed to start on the field, or at least that's everyone projects, and you started on the field too. So maybe he can uh, he can follow in those footsteps. We got a little little fist bump from Danielle P. Um, Michael Park says, "Wish nothing but the best for you, Troy." So um, we appreciate that. Uh, all right, a couple rapid fire questions, or at least one. Um, are you a, a taco or burrito guy? Taco. Tacos. Yeah, I had a bad burrito at Chipotle one time. Oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) That's funny. Um, Do you have a certain type of taco or anything like that? Like a carne asada taco, pollo asada, anything like that? 
Ah, uh, no, nah, nothing specific. I like soft tacos, though. Okay. Oh. Soft tacos, not the crunchy tacos. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, uh, you know what? Matt, Matt told me to ask you about the thing, but I didn't. We're running out of time. I don't, I don't know if we have time for that. Um, so oh, there was one more question. Is there anything about like the most memorable moment you had in Notre Dame about um, and, like anything that happened? Like funny Dang story right. or... Oh, uh, okay. So we gotta go funny story. We gotta go. My, we're going back to my freshman year, right? Okay. This is a time when, you know, I was just starting to play. Um, I was just, you know, the stress of college football was weighing heavy on me, and everything was going, you know, all over the place. I remember we were in seven oh seven, and uh, I had like, you know, like rolled my ankle a little bit, and I was like feeling it. So, you know, I was hurt a little bit. I was looking, you know, I didn't see anybody on the sideline coming to get me. So I was like, all right, whatever, I'm just staying. Um, the offense had a post that, like, the next play, like, as yeah. I'm still hurt. And now, like I said, I remember, like, trying to run, like, being like, oh, like, I can't. Like, I'm frustrated. I'm trying to play. I'm trying to get on the field. You know, we're losing. I'm trying to be the best player I can. And basically, all the emotion just came out. Like, I remember uh, the guy scoring because I couldn't tag him. I took my helmet off. I threw it. And I think this somewhere it's on video that guys recorded and watched because it was that funny. <laughs> like, it, it, at the time, it wasn't funny to me, but watching it after the fact, and I wish there was film to show, it was wild. So, like, I threw my helmet, right? And, you know, guys were starting to run at me. I remember it was Avery Sebastian that was running at me. I grabbed him, I was slamming it. He was like, relax. And I was like, Shut up! Like I was screaming back at him, like, and I didn't even know who it was at the time. Like, like he's a vet, so I, I wouldn't yeah. have done that. But I was just so emotional and so like tripping out that like I was just like, ah! <laughs> like, like, like it was like basically like releasing all the anxiety and stress and everything that was going on in that one moment, and it looked crazy. Like I said, we still like guys in my class still bring it up, and I remember Coach Kelly walked over and was like, hey, 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 hey. And I was like, like, tears down my face. I'm like, he was like, relax. Like, what's, he was like, what's wrong with you? Like, everybody just thought like I was the craziest dude after that because, yeah, it just it just hit me. So that's one of my funniest moments, I would say. Man, you know, when when things happen on the football field, it, it, you always are cognizant of the fact that everything is filmed, right? But sometimes yeah. you just you just kind of forget. And it always, anytime, like they always say, the eye in the sky don't lie, and 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 they it always they always get you, no matter what it is. I mean, you even if you're just standing on the sideline and you're messing around, like everything is filmed. So uh, um, and like I said, so some it's, it was somewhere. I think it was somebody from the offensive side had like saw it and like saying something, like laughing about it in film, but I never got to see it. So like I said, it's it's archived footage uh, never be released <laughs> but it was hilarious troy you didn't you didn't tell me it was your sister <laughs> oh yeah of course. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know I don't, I don't know what your sister um all right well i i don't want to keep i don't want to keep you too much longer so i'm gonna let you go um Thank you, thank you so much for coming on, man. This was I had such a fun time. I, honestly, I, I could keep asking questions because I'm curious about so many other things. I'll have to have you on again. I, I, that's yeah, what have we to might do. just have to do it again. Yeah, we'll have oh, to go I, through some stuff again. But. I'll have I'll have you on again. Um, maybe we could talk about like some DB things, right? Because I have I have a bunch of questions about that. So um, we will have to have you on again. Um, but Troy Pride, thank you very much for coming on. Good luck. Good luck. Keep keep up the uh, the work. Keep up the, the positive attitude. Um, I think everyone's rooting for you. Um, you represented the university with 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 pride, if I may say, and hey. um, and you did it the right way. And we had a great time watching you. And um, you know, like I said, good luck with everything, man. Great, I appreciate you, man. All right, boss. Stay tuned. We're gonna find out where the next home is gonna be pretty soon here. But you know, yeah, I appreciate it, man. I love to always talk about my Irish. Um, ISD family, you know, so um, I appreciate it. For sure, for sure. So um, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, subscribe to the, the show, hit the like button. Uh, 
go to irisportsdaily.com. Yeah, pound that like for sure. Hey, go to irisportsdaily.com, uh, click the premium section, get on the message board, get all the information from Matt Freeman and Christian McCollum. Um, with that being said, everyone have a great weekend, and we will talk to you very, very soon.